If you want to know what Bethlehem looks like today, this is what it looks like. It's not, you know, the manger and starlit hillsides with shepherds and sheep. It's an eight metre high concrete wall surrounding this beautiful ancient city. At the time of year when all the shops are filled with beautiful lights, let's put up this affront. Because the wall is an affront. And so let's try to replicate that. I think it was Archbishop Desmond Tutu who said, anyone who says the church shouldn't get involved in politics has never read the gospel. St James's Church is a beautiful church designed by Christopher Wren and has a wonderful courtyard in front of it. Normally it's full of market stalls, but this Christmas we decided to do something different, which is to host an art installation of the wall around Bethlehem. The design was quite challenging in the sense that we had to recreate as closely as possible the look and feel of the, the real wall as it's seen in Palestine. Often these things are easy to talk about, but actually to get the thing built is a different story. The wall consists of 24 panels which are 8 metres tall and about 1.2 metres wide. It looks and, and feels like the, like the Palestinian separation wall. One, two, three! three. Ah. Woo. We've done it! <laughs> 24 panels waiting for the scaffolders. All of them have the concrete finish, and now we just have to wait for it to dry. I went to Bethlehem last year for the first time. The moment of first seeing the wall is a very profound and shocking experience. And for me, the almost instant response was to turn to my companions and say, well, we should build this in London then people would see what it's like. We were content to lend our courtyard to do this because it's always important for us as a Christian community to connect with the world as it really is. When 20 of us went to Israel and Palestinian territories, it was an overpowering memory that the people of Bethlehem are really struggling. We really wanted to try to respond to a request from the United Churches of the Holy Land saying, please, will you let people know what is our experience living behind the wall? It's fantastic to see the wall going up and seeing how much it's going to block the church out. The tonnage is approximately 20 tonnes of water ballast plus about 30 tonnes of scaffolding. Masses of kit is arriving. We've been planning this day for a year. It looks like concrete. It does not look like wood. That's very encouraging. Yeah. It's very moving to see it up and to be able to bring a little bit of the wall Bethlehem experience for Londoners and for the thousands of tourists that are going to come here and be stopped in their tracks and think, what, what is this? What I see it as is a huge question mark in our courtyard. What is this? You know, what is it doing here? It's something that demands your attention. 
and it's something that demands an opinion from you. What does this wall feel like? It takes your breath away a little bit. It definitely cranes the neck and it's frighteningly real. I'm thinking about how large it is. You're in London and it's shocking to see a massive wall blocking you. I thought it was a replica of the Berlin Wall to start with until I had it explained. But of course you don't think about these things unless someone makes you aware of them all the time. Incredible, horrible to think that that's somewhere in this current day and age. I just think it's really bad. You'd like to see beyond it, wouldn't you? I lived in South Africa, but the walls were hidden. It's daunting. Imagine living with something like this. I'm from Bahrain and I was thinking about the connection between people who are struggling. I was doing a little heart from Bahrain to Palestine. So. I think most people, whether they're Christian or not, probably have an image of Bethlehem in their minds, which has got shepherds in fields and a star and wise men. And in some ways, of course, there are bits of Bethlehem that are not completely unlike that. But I don't really think it's good religion to continue to have that image of Bethlehem without acknowledging what the actual town of Bethlehem is experiencing. You know, I see uh, the wall that Israel has built in the, the West Bank and East Jerusalem almost every day. I still can't believe the Israelis did that and I can't believe the world let them do that. The wall is twice as high as the Berlin Wall. The Israeli wall imprisons tens of thousands of Palestinians in cells. It is what Israel wants to demarcate as a future border. And so it's built deep in Palestinian areas. The wall winds its way far from the actual border, which is the Green Line. The International Court of Justice in The Hague in 2004 called the wall illegal and ordered almost that it had to be dismantled. The wall in Bethlehem is a complete system of closure. We are currently confined to only 13% of Bethlehem's territory. We cannot expand. We lost most of the agricultural land and we lost a lot of our landmarks. So for a city that depends on tourism, the loss of landmarks is major. Maybe with an Israeli guide, they'll run tourists into Bethlehem to see the church and run out again. So they're not spending the night, they're not going to restaurants, they're not buying souvenirs there. So it's a tremendous economic, social, cultural, psychological impediment on Palestinians. Bethlehem Unwrapped, we are unwrapping the traditional Victorian imagery of Bethlehem, but it's a double unwrapping, because what we're saying as well is, let's celebrate the hope and the vision and the life and the spirit and the culture of the people of Bethlehem. Let's unwrap the wall. And that's why we put on this amazing program of performance, poetry, comedy, food, music, dance. And this is all part of this movement which is developing in Palestine called Beautiful Resistance. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I am an Arab woman of color and we come in all shades of anger. I hope people do come past and notice that it is a protest wall and don't just think, oh yeah, that's, that's improved the look of the church a bit. I don't know. <laughs> I'm delighted that our courtyard has become a place of public debate and conversation from people from all over the world. And it seems to me that's exactly what the church should be for. Support Israel's right to self-defense. How is it providing long-term security for Israel? It's a temporary, legitimate, self-defensive, <coughs> emergency barrier against terrorism. That's what it is. The whole idea that it saves lives, we don't accept in the, in the Israeli peace movement. During the 10 years that the wall has been there, you have a peace process going on. The Israeli army is very active in the West Bank. The Palestinian Authority has become Israel's policeman. So if there's a decline in terrorism or in attacks, it can't be attributed necessarily to the wall. There's a lot of other things going on as well. We're not being entirely neutral about this. We're very definitely saying that for the inhabitants of Bethlehem, it's a disaster. Peace is about relatedness. And so the wall and all walls are a denial of all that is best 
about humanity, our capacity for empathy, love, forgiveness, connection, understanding. The wall is a denial of everything that is best and uplifting about the human spirit. This is not any individual doing this. This is a church community knowing what it's doing. I'm so proud to be part of a church that does that. It's fantastic. We've already had people saying to us, can you bring the wall to Birmingham? Could you bring it to New York? Churches from America contacted and said, maybe we can now be brave enough to do something like this. And I think that's my hope and my prayer, that this could be a little pebble that will contribute in the end to a, an avalanche that will eventually bring down the wall.